In 2012, of course, you joined Britain's Got Talent, the judging panel. How do you enjoy that? Are you going to come back for the next season? It's fun. I mean, I actually really enjoyed watching the show. And I met Simon quite a few years ago before I did the show. And he said, our show, he said, our show is the real life version of your show. As in he meant, you know, it, it was the real life Little Britain. Yeah. And I said, I love, I'm addicted to watching it. I love all the characters you have on the show, all the eccentric characters. And I said, me and Matt often watch it to get inspired as we did The X Factor and all those kind of shows because in the early stages in those shows, you get loads of very eccentric people with bizarre acts and they are often comedy gold. Um, and so I wasn't expecting to ever be asked to be on it. But Simon Cowell said this very curious thing to me. He says, I don't like comedy. I don't find comedians funny, but I find you funny. And I was like, that's kind of unnerving. You're basically saying you have no sense of humour, but you think I'm funny. That's weird. That's, that, I'm not sure that I want to hear that. Um, and I think I was very unsure how I was going to be on it. But the first day, I just kind of got into it. Um, I buzzed the first person, I got over that because I thought I'm not going to be able to buzz anybody. I was winding him up and the audience were loving it and I thought, okay, this is fine, I can do this. It's slightly strange because you're judging people on things you can't do. I can't sing, I can't dance. Um, and you know, I'm sort of sitting there passing judgment on people who can. Uh, but at least my role is the court jester, I suppose, so I don't have to take the whole thing too seriously. And it's quite a silly show where a dancing dog can win. It's, you know, it's not, it's not a matter of life and death for anybody, is it? So, um, Does everyone always ask you what Simon's really like? Yes, they do. Yeah. And actually, you were talking about sexuality, and that's the big question you get asked about him. Um, he's, uh, I think he's the kind of person who has his life exactly how he wants it. If he doesn't want to get up till four in the afternoon, he won't. If he wants to have, um, you know, sausages and chips every night for his dinner, he will. You know, he's one of those people who does, he has his life exactly how he wants it. Um, and uh, he's also, I rather like that he celebrates his success. Like, most stars now are quite coy about showing necessarily their wealth or anything. Not him, you know, he arrives in a half a million pound Rolls Royce Phantom. <laughs> You know, designer clothes, shades, long coat and everything. And he plays up to being a star. And it's actually quite refreshing yes. because if you go back in time to a more glamorous age, maybe the 70s and 80s, you know, see Joan Collins walking through an airport in sort of dark glasses and a fur coat. It was exciting, wasn't it? Yeah. But now everyone's like, oh, I'm just wearing my tracksuit and I've got a beanie on. And it's kind of boring. <laughs> you want stars to be stars. And he is, he is a star, even though he has no discernible talent of his own. <laughs> Which is the weirdest thing, isn't it? He's got to have some talent for something. Well, he's, a, he's, got, he's got a talent for spotting talent. Yes. Yes. yes true. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.